Hey everybody, in today's video, we're going to take a look at the new Optolong L Quad Enhance filter. When I first heard about this, I got very excited because it sounds like the perfect complement to my existing Optolong L Enhance filter. Because the Optolong L Enhance or L Ultimate or L Extreme, those are all designed to photograph nebulae from a light polluted city. And in my experience, you can get some great photos. This new L Quad Enhance though, is designed to allow you to photograph broadband targets from light polluted areas. These broadband targets are things like the Andromeda Galaxy, the Pleiades, the Iris Nebula, and more. So theoretically, if you had something like the Optolong L Quad Enhance and then the L Enhance, you can photograph any target you want from a light polluted area. And in today's video, we're gonna look at seven different examples I've taken over the last few months and we'll see just how well the filter does. I should mention that Optolong sent me this filter free of charge back in October. They just wanted to get my opinion on it, do a video, and let you guys know what I thought. First, let's take a look at Optolong's website and see how this filter works. As it says here, the L Quad Enhance should be good for star clusters, dark and reflection nebula, and galaxies from light polluted areas. Another thing to note is that this is apparently good for Bortle 1 to Bortle 7, but if you are in a Bortle 8 or 9, then you're better off using one of the narrowband filters, again like the L Enhance, the L Ultimate, or the L Extreme. Next we have the transmission spectrum for the L Quad Enhance filter. This graph shows us that the filter will block out most of the light pollution wavelengths while still letting plenty of light through from your nebular galaxy. And that about covers it for the filter specs. To start off this review, let's head to a light polluted area. Last night we had our first clear night in about three or four months, and I drove over to Bremerton, Washington, which is about a Bortle 6, maybe even a Bortle 7. For these tests, I drove to a parking lot at the university there in Bremerton. There were a ton of parking lights, which were very annoying, but I guess that's the whole point of the video, is to see how well this filter does in these kinds of adverse conditions. For my gear, I was using two identical setups for the most part. Two ZWO AM5 mounts, two Red Cat 51 telescopes, same location, same night, same amount of data, one setup had the filter, one setup had no filter. The only difference was the camera. The rig that had the Optolong L Quad Enhance was using the ASI 2600 MC Duo camera. The other rig with no filter had the ASI 2600 color camera. So it's virtually the same thing, but just wanna make sure we're clear on that. My first target was the Pleiades because this is the perfect broadband target if we're gonna test this filter out. Unfortunately though, I only got about an hour's worth of data before the clouds started to roll in. Ideally, I would get between four and eight hours for this review, but with the way things are here in the Pacific Northwest, an hour is all I can do. Once I capture that Pleiades data, I aimed up to the Cone Nebula next. This is more of an H-alpha target, but I thought it'd be a good example, and frankly, it was the only thing visible directly overhead, so that's what I had to go with. I captured about an hour and a half's worth of data for the cone nebula on each one of these rigs. Again, I would like to have maybe even close to eight hours, but this is all I can do. Now that you understand how I captured this data, let's over to PixInsight and take a look. All right, so we've got our images loaded up. The photo on the left was taken with no filter. The photo on the right was taken with the L Quad Enhanced filter. And I'm not gonna show you my whole workflow today in the interest of time, but what I will do is at least color correct the photo and auto stretch it so we can see any sort of difference. And there we go. At a glance, both images look virtually identical. They both have a gradient off to the right. There's a lot of light pollution in the photo, but the Pleiades is visible in the center. To be honest, I was hoping to see more of a difference though with the filter, so I'm a bit disappointed here with our initial results. Understand though that this is only an hour's worth of data from a light polluted area. That might not be enough data to show the real difference. But unfortunately, due to the weather here in the Pacific Northwest, this is the best I can do. And I don't want to wait another year to publish this review. Next, I want to show you what this data looks like after a bit of processing. So what I did is I ran SPCC to fix the color cast, Blur Exterminator to fix any star distortion, Star Exterminator to remove the stars, and finally I ran Dynamic Background Extraction to fix the weird gradients throughout the photo and the vignette. At that point, I ought to stretch the photos, save them as TIFFs, and now we're gonna take a look at them both in Photoshop. I realize the photo looks terrible now, but that's a combination of not having enough data and using dynamic background extraction. 
This accentuates any flaws with your data or the sensor or anything else. And for this reason, you really want to get as much exposure time as possible from light polluted areas. But right now we're looking at the L quad image and down here we have the no filter image. I'm having a hard time seeing any meaningful change between both images. Of course, the white balance is shifting a little bit, but beyond that, I would have thought the L quad would do a better job of accentuating the nebula and suppressing that light pollution. Before we move on, I want to give you a reference image. This photo of the Pleiades was taken from a Bortal 2 with the same exact camera gear, no filter, and the same amount of total exposure time, about one hour. See how much better that dust stands out from a dark sky? That's kind of what I was hoping for with the L quad enhanced filter. I guess this just proves the fact that there's no substitute for getting out to a darker sky. Next, let's take a look at the Cone Nebula, which was my second target for the night. We've got the same story here, no filter on the left, Optolong L quad enhance on the right. When I auto stretch both images, we can see pretty similar vignette and gradient throughout the photo, still a lot of light pollution, but the Cone Nebula is much more obvious with the filter compared to no filter. Now at least we're seeing some change there. And this is one thing that I would say is consistent between all the tests that I've done, is that any H-alpha data will look better using this filter compared to no filter. I did the same workflow for this data though. I ran blur exterminator, star exterminator, dynamic background extraction, saved them as TIFFs, and then brought them into Photoshop, which we'll take a look at next. Like we saw earlier, the photo does not look very good thanks to dynamic background extraction and only having an hour and a half's worth of data. This was the L quad version. This was no filter. And I gotta say, the no filter image doesn't look that bad, all things considered. Just like before, I wanna give you another comparison photo. This image of the Co Nebula was captured with the same camera gear, although I did use the Optilong L Enhance filter, and I was in a Bortal too. But beyond that, the same telescope, the same camera, and the same total exposure time, about an hour and a half. Look at all those amazing details that are now visible. This is a huge change compared to our Bortle 6 data here. And this is why I'm so adamant about getting out to a darker sky whenever possible. Because if you can get out to a Bortle 3 or a Bortle 2, or better, it's gonna have a huge impact on the quality of your final image. This is especially true for your broadband targets. So just understand that if you are shooting from a light polluted area, you're making everything much more difficult, especially the processing. I understand that for many of us, there's nothing we can do about that, but if you ever get the opportunity, you should really prioritize a trip to a dark sky. That concludes our Bortle 6 tests, and unfortunately, I'm having a hard time really seeing any benefit with the L Quad Enhanced Filter. Now we're gonna take a look at some sample images from my backyard, which is in a Bortle 4.5. First up, we have the Orion Nebula. This image was taken with the L Quad Filter. To be clear, I did not run any dynamic background extraction here. All I did was blur exterminator, star exterminator, and my color correction. And with the L quad filter, we have a lot of that nice red nebulosity in the H alpha region. If we compare that to no filter, that is a noticeable difference. Especially up here above Orion, we can see that in the L quad image, those details are quite defined. Whereas without a filter, they're a bit more subtle. Still, there's not that much of a difference in terms of the two images and the light pollution. Finally, here's my edited version of the Orion Nebula with the Optilong L Quad Enhanced Filter. I know it's a bit contrasty, but this was just version one. I like to do multiple different versions until I have something I'm finally happy with. Let's move on to another target. Here we have the Horsehead Nebula. On top is the L Quad data. On the bottom is no filter. They both look surprisingly similar, I gotta say. Although this region of the photo is more obvious with the L quad enhanced compared to no filter. More importantly, if I zoom into the image, in every example, the L quad filter has more intense color noise compared to no filter. I understand they're both grainy, but the L quad is much harsher in terms of the grain. And that makes sense because, as we saw on the website, the Optilong filter is blocking wavelengths of light. And if you're blocking light, you're gonna have more grain. That's all there is to it. Just understand that you will need to capture more data with this filter than you might expect for a final clean image. Another noticeable difference are the lens flares caused by the Optilong filter. We see these around the flame nebula and also in the upper left. 
You'll note that these are not visible in the unfiltered image. And here's my version one edit of the Horsehead Nebula with the Optilong filter. I think it turned out pretty nice. Our third test is the Pleiades. This time though, we're in a Bortle 4.5 rather than a Bortle 6 or 7. On top, we have the L Quad filter. On the bottom, we have no filter. I am having a real hard time seeing any benefit with the L Quad in this one. And to make matters worse, if we zoom in, the L Quad is just a little bit more grainy than no filter. Next up, we have the Andromeda Galaxy. This was actually taken on the night of the full moon, which is kind of interesting because if we look at the no filter image, I can't believe I was able to get that much data of the Andromeda Galaxy during the full moon. That's pretty crazy to me. And when we turn on the L quad version, I'm not seeing a big difference in terms of the detail here in the galaxy or in the background suppression of that extra light. I do notice some dust spots though, and this is one of the things you have to watch out for because the further you push the contrast in your images, the more these dust spots are gonna become visible. For this reason, it's always a good idea to keep your sensors free of any dust along with the glass in your telescope. Here's one last look though from the L quad version to no filter. And the more I look at it, I can actually see some vertical lines here in the L quad image compared to no filter. This is not entirely unexpected because as we've been talking about today, the L quad filter cuts back the amount of light and exacerbates any issues with your sensor. Our final example today is the North American Nebula. And this is the one image where the L quad had a noticeable improvement. The H alpha data throughout the region is much more obvious compared to no filter. And I find this to be overall a more detailed photo. Here's a look at my version one edit for the North American Nebula with the Optilong filter. It looks all right, but I think I could definitely improve on it for version two. All right, well, I've now shown you seven different examples, five of which were taken in Bortle 4.5, two of which were taken in Bortle 6, maybe even Bortle 7. I wish I could have gotten more data on all seven targets, but the reality is it's just not possible here in the winter, unfortunately. For this reason, if you do have the filter, you might want to leave a comment down below and let us know how your experience has been with the L Quad Enhance. But based on my test so far, I don't know if this filter is worth the money. I would much rather have the Optilong L Enhance if I was looking to purchase a filter for light pollution. Because with the L Enhance, I can isolate those nebula, and while I can't do broadband targets, that's okay. I can always do broadband targets when I finally get out to those darker skies a few times per year. And for those of you shooting in a Bortle 8 or even Bortle 9, then you might want to go for the Optilong L Ultimate or L Extreme. That way you can just isolate the wavelengths from those H Alpha Nebula. I hope this allows you to make an informed decision if you're thinking about purchasing the L Quad Enhanced Filter. And I will have all these images linked down below if you want to download them and take a closer look. So that's all I've got for you today. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in another video.